Wichita State and Alcorn State tonight here in the second and final game day of the Shocker Winter Classic. Shockers have now won nine consecutive Shocker Winter Classic games. Only the second all-time matchup between the Shockers and Lady Braves. Shane Denniston and Gehrig here live uh, at half court, Charles Koch Arena. And Wichita State, frankly, yesterday dinning against Chicago State victorious, but we're pretty fortunate to do so. Yeah, a game in which Wichita State was never really able to put away the Cougars, ultimately made one more play down the stretch, but I think ultimately a game in which Keith Adams will have plenty of opportunities to analyze the film and give his give her team some, some room for improvement, I think. And one of the big reasons why Wichita State won, won Angie Tompkins came off the bench at 18 points, eight rebounds, a lot of energy. Yeah, just two points in two minutes in the first half was virtually a non-factor, but in the second half really made an impact, especially with her aggressiveness on the offensive boards. She was the reason why Wichita State had any energy at all in the second half and maybe the reason why they emerged with a victory. Cesaria Ambrosio also did some of the little dirty work that she normally does, passing and rebounding, but she was aggressive at times too. Yeah, 6.6 .6 rebounds and four assists. Very workmanlike effort from her, but she was willing to drive to the basket. And when the Chicago State defense kind of rotated over and she was left with a driving lane, she was aggressive in doing just what she needs to do. And that's attacking the rim, creating some and one opportunities and giving the Shockers another scoring option. Alcorn State lost 76 to 52 to Oral Roberts. Wichita State will line it up against the Lady Braves when we come back. Introducing Dunkin's new cold brew coffee. Steeped slowly in cold water for small batches with an ultra smooth full body flavor. Discover the craft of cold brew today and keep on. America runs on Dunkin'. This is an interesting all corn state club there you see four and four. Shockers trying to climb back closer to 500 by getting a victory here tonight. But they got two pretty good scores. Alcorn State does Tia Sanders and Alexis Freeman. Freeman had 14 points last night. Yeah, she had 14 points, Shane, but she did it on just six of 21 shooting. The Braves need her to be a lot more efficient on the offensive end. She's an excellent defender, ranks top 10 in the country in steals per game, but she needs to be closer to that 40 to 45% range from the offensive side of the ball to give Alcorn State that second option to go alongside Tia Sanders. Yeah, Sanders averages 20.4. They both had 14 points last night and losing 76 to 52 to Oral Roberts. Courtney Pruitt in her third season as the head coach at Alcorn State has them at four and four this year. And her starting lineup looks like this. We'll have Miracle Rushing, who's on the all-main team. She's wearing number three tonight. Uh, instead of number 25, also Jamesha Bernard, just a freshman. There you see Freeman and Sanders, a couple of seniors, and Jada Hargrove, a sophomore, 5'5 five -five guard, rounding out the starting line. Keith Adams in her first season at Wichita State. Shockers victorious against Chicago State, 66 to 63. Got her normal con uh, contributions from Rangy Bassard. She had 18 points and 10 rebounds last night. Kind of quietly doing so. Denning told you about Cesaria Ambrosio, 6'6 six, six and 4 in her 38 minutes. And Angie Tompkins not pictured and not starting, but she was really the spark plug last night that allowed Wichita State to outlast Chicago State by three. Shockers have won nine consecutive Shocker Winter Classic matchups. It's a two-day get-together, and at the conclusion of this one, Chicago State will take on Oral Roberts to wrap up the Shocker Winter Classic. Wichita State swept Abilene Christian and Incarnate Word last year in this tournament. Prairie View A&M and North Carolina A&T. Uh, the year before that, Louisiana Monroe, Winthrop, Austin P, and Texas Pan American. All Shocker victims at the Shocker Winter Classic. Here we go. Glad you could join us from Charles Coke Arena. 
Shockers win the opening tap. Well, that didn't take long. Rangy Bassard averaging 18 a game. Had 18 last night and two quick ones here tonight. No reason not to go to her early and often. She was matched up there against rushing goes just five foot nine against the six one Bassard. That's a matchup the Shockers will want to take advantage of. Rebound by the five five Diamond Lockhart, but a turnover and a little jumper in the lane is short and rims out by Alexis Freeman. There's the player that we were highlighting in the open, Alexis Freeman, 14 points last night, but took her a ton of shots to get it. She comes in averaging nearly 16 a game, but shoots below 31% from the floor. It's gonna be a matchup of veteran backcourts. Andre Stovall gets the lay in there for the Shockers and Diamond Lockhart against Freeman and Sanders for Alcorn State. Stovall getting the start tonight. Julia Preston really never got on track last night. There was some foul trouble. She only had two points in 14 minutes. So Keith Adams going with Andre Stovall to start with, and it's paid off here early. Three in the corner by Alexis Freeman. Not a huge part of her game, just a 27% three-point shooter, but she is willing to put it up. Ambrosio, number 30 right there, looks to create, looks to help her other teammates before she looks for her shot. But at times last night, she looked to create her own when the defense presented that opportunity. See what she does late in the clock here. And she snakes one over the top of the rim for her first two. Only averages about three a game. Had six last night. Good start for her. She's shown some confidence on the offensive end. Shot clock running down there. They isolated her at the top of the key one-on-one. -on -one, kind of cleared out to create some space and a good spin move to free herself. Corner three, good again. Alexis Freeman. So she's got six quick ones and Wichita State turns it over. Freeman teammates at Blinn Junior College with Julia Preston who you mentioned earlier and there are a lot of transfers on this Braves team nine of them on the roster Freeman with a heat check three from the right angle that wouldn't go and the Shockers corral the rebound nice job by Miracle rushing to deflect that pass out of bounds otherwise Rangy Bassard has a layup short tried to bank it off the window off the inbound and Lady Braves come away with a rebound saw a lot of pressure from Alcorn State against Oral Roberts yesterday they have not deployed as much of that in the early going here but typically will play a very fast-paced up-tempo style and speaking of turnovers they force 22.6 from opponents and that includes 12 steals a game and Denning told you about Alexis Freeman with her nearly four per game up among the nation's leaders. So they'll turn you over if you're not strong with the ball. And frankly, Wichita State was not against Chicago State and gave it away 20 times last night. Yeah, Al Alcorn State forced 26 turnovers yesterday against Oral Roberts and still lost by 24. Not something that you see very often, but they will force you to be very steady with the basketball. Sabrina Lozada Cabbage makes her first shot. So Wichita State off to a Pretty hot start offensively, making four of their first five attempts. Open three, rims out no good. Ambrosio with the rebound on the attempt by Jada Hargrove. And one opportunity for Diamond Lockhart. So just about everybody getting into the act for Wichita State. How many times yesterday did we see Diamond Lockhart do just that against Taisha Bauer? She would do a hard crossover to her left side just drive the basketball and that time she got the defender on her hip created just enough space to draw the contact while still finishing all five shockers now have two points and diamond lockhart with the opportunity to be the first one to three shockers operating at a pretty high level offensively Deflected away by Lozada Cabbage. Nawari into the game very early for Alcorn State. And six points against Cole Roberts last night in her first action of the season for the Lady Braves. One of three players who made their season debut yesterday as Alcorn State 
used a very deep bench in that ball game. They played 13 players. Hugo Shaneri Nawari, number 22, 5'10", from Arlington, Texas. You see her there in the mid lane. And a wild scoop is rejected by Rangy Bessard. Freeman going from the left side of the floor all the way to the right block and giving up quite a few inches and pounds and everything else to Rangy Bessard. Good job by Bessard, too, keeping the body off and just letting her height do the work. Rushing underneath the arm of Rangy Bassard, left it a little short. That circus shot almost went in. Got another mismatch down low, Bassard against Tia Sanders. Ambrosio with the left hand. Boy, where is this offensive output coming from? She's got four early, already past her average. And that's a very promising development for Wichita State if she can become another complimentary scorer to go along with Bassard, Tompkins, and Lockhart. Corner three, flat, a little short, but getting her own rebound was Hargrove. Now blocking foul on Rangie Bassard. It was a little demonstrative in her reaction. And that'll be a foul on Rangie Bassard, her first. Hargrove to the free throw line, averaging Five and a half points, a little over three rebounds per contest. That one's up and good. But just two points on one of five shooting against Oral Roberts as Alcorn State just could not get anything going against the Golden Eagles. They shot 29% from the floor. 23% from three. So they didn't see the ball go in the basket all that often last night against ORU. The basketball is trending towards Four out, one in with a lot of three-point shots. This game will not feature much of it. Neither one of these teams shoots the three particularly well or particularly often. Bassard thought she got bumped on the right block. ORU within, or uh, Al Alcorn State within five, although they've missed their last six shots and got a drought working on three minutes now. That was a pretty good pass to find Nuari on the back side, but she was right underneath the basket and hit the bottom side of the rim going up with it. Oh, great position and a good feed by Bassard to Lozada Cabbage. She's got four. That's the high-low element we were talking a lot about yesterday. It seemed to work quite a bit for the Shockers when the offense became stagnant. Nicely executed there from Bassard to Cabbage. Shockers red hot, seven out of nine from the floor. Good contest by Lozada Cabbage. Got the rebound. Nawari left it short. Seven consecutive misses by the Lady Braves. And the pass goes out of bounds from Ambrosio looking for Rangy Bussard. Good start for Wichita State. They lead it by seven at the break. Shockers up 15 to eight after Alcorn State missing its last seven field goal attempts. So nine of the 11 Lady Brave shots have misfired. Meanwhile, Wichita State seven of nine from the floor. 
And it's the kind of patience and offensive balance that you're really looking for if you're a Shocker fan right now. Well, they're doing a great job of getting it into the post with those mismatches. Lozada, Cabbage, and Bassard figured out field days, but the real surprise has been Cesaria Ambrosio, who has already got four points on a couple of nice drives to the basket. She was a little out of control on that last transition opportunity and committed the turnover, but still, that is a very promising sign for the Shockers. Wichita State with four Ps from Denning mentioned Lozada Cabbage and Ambrosio. They have three from Diamond Lockhart on an and one. Rangy Bassard has two. Under Stovall with two. So all five Shockers have scored. Matter of fact, all five Shockers had exactly two apiece through the first 10 points. Three turnovers to only one for Alcorn State. That's kind of keeping them hanging around. Shockers plus three on the board so far. And Alcorn State has made two free throws to Wichita State's one, and another equalizer has been uh, Alexis Freeman, a couple of triples. Uh, normally, again, that's not a big part of their game, nor is it Wichita State's. Well, Freeman with the two threes, but we have not even called Tia Sanders' name. She has just one foul. That's her only line in the box score so far. A 20-point-per-game score who has not even taken a shot as Wichita State has completely taken her out of the offense. Last night, as Denning told you, they really struggled. Alcorn State did to put it in the basket. Less than 30% and off to a miserable start here this evening. 18.2% on 2 of 11. So Alcorn State out of Lorman, Mississippi in the Southwest Athletic Conference doing battle with the Shockers for only the second time ever. And the previous one back in the early 90s was won by the Lady Braves by 20. Corner three, no good. And Angie Tompkins checks in for the first time for Wichita State, one of the heroes from last night. And Kiki Thompson making an appearance for the first time in four games. Tompkins calling for it just off the left block. Turns and fires it in, might as well. See if it carries over, and apparently it did. <laughs> that was just a confidence shot. Willing to face up on her defender, and when there was a little bit of space created, she just let it fly. Speaking of letting it fly, Quick trigger by Chloe Lane in there for the first time for the Lady Braves. One and done as the Shockers do a good job on the defensive boards. Boy, you're right, Denning. I don't know that Tia Sanders even touched the ball. If she has, it hadn't been for very long. Tompkins gets position again. Good pass to the cutting Thompson, and Kiki Thompson lays it in. Got to feel good to be back if you're Kiki Thompson, the senior from Montgomery. And I'm really liking the concept of getting Tompkins the ball with that elbow extended where she can make the mid-range jump shot and is also tall enough to see over the defense and make accurate passes. And over the top of Miracle rushing, almost knocked it away for a turnover. Good start offensively for Wichita State. Freeman leaves it short, and the Shockers can't grab the defensive board. But they create the steal for the moment. Tompkins on the floor, saves it to Thompson, and the Shockers survive that scrum. Good hustle by Angie Tompkins. And a pass gets through to Tompkins. It's that kind of a first quarter for Wichita State. Just a bullet that Rushing had both hands on and couldn't squeeze it and somehow got through, and Ambrosio gets credit for an assist as Tompkins finishes with the reverse. <laughs> Just getting ready to say, who do you give that one to? <laughs> rushing, maybe a half. The hockey assist, maybe. Shockers have come out on fire, 10 of 12 from the field. Well, Ambrosio is just completely taking Carter away. Doesn't even have room to dribble. A brick three-pointer and an over-the-back call on Miracle Rushing. So a couple subs in for Wichita State. Alicia Fay and in there for the first time, Julia Preston. Brianna Tolliver is in there for the Lady Braves, making her debut in this game here tonight. Tolliver, as well as Nawari, only played in one other game this year. That was last night. Kiki Thompson on the take, had it poked away. Inside two minutes here in the first quarter, the Shockers have only missed twice. 
Another key too, I think, Denning, is only three turnovers for a team that forces nearly 23 in Alcorn State. Yeah, when they're getting 15 to 20 steals, it's a big part of them creating offense through their defense. If you can eliminate that, the Braves are really gonna struggle to create shots. Shockers with a rare miss. Lady Braves come back the other way and a bullet pass by Alexis Freeman goes off a Lady Brave hand out of bounds and that is turnover number three for them. And the Shockers have done an excellent job of getting back in transition. There have not been many numbers opportunities for Alcorn State either. It's a good test game I think for Kiki Thompson because normally this is a style of play that is very well suited to her. She's able to get up and down is probably Wichita State's quickest player and now has an opportunity to kind of get out there and run and get the rust off just a little bit. Miracle rushing has two quick fouls, bang, bang, here within the last minute or so. Rushing only had two points last night against ORU, but she averages around nine, so she's a competent scorer. She's going to go to the bench. Hugo Shaniri Nawari checks back in for the Lady Braves. Tompkins, a big step through, a little strong. And I believe a shocker is going to call it, no, jump ball. He's going to say maybe uh, Diamond Lockhart would get whistled for a foul, but a tie ball and stay with the Lady Braves. That's still the, the high elbow extended concept, though, that I was talking about. Allow Tompkins to kind of rip through and drive on her defender. Did everything right there except for the finish. And if she can take a, any kind of a page from Rangy Bussard and Sabrina Lozada Cabbage's book as far as passing from high low. The Shockers will really be tough to stop offensively, not only tonight, but moving forward. And great defense for her there. Kept the hands high, moved the feet, and was able to stay in front of the driving tower. Final minute of the first quarter. Preston in the keyhole, great look to Tompkins. Angie Tompkins has six first quarter points, but that was a great look. An active Angie Tompkins is a good Angie Tompkins, moving without the basketball, and then that's just excellent awareness from Preston that the help side defender had slid up and it left a vacated spot on the floor. Ball's not very far away from Angie Tompkins on either side of the floor. And a travel will give it back to the Shockers with four seconds left in the quarter. A huge first quarter for Wichita State. And they are beating Alcorn State at their own game, forcing five brave turnovers and only committing three of their own. Alcorn State is now two for 15. They missed their last 11 shots. And the Shockers are on a 10-0 run. See if they can get a prayer answered here at the end. And poked away from behind two-tenths of a second. May not be enough. Maybe Kiki Thompson made one too many dribbles. Might want to heave it up from half court just to be safe. She was looking at the clock the whole way down if you watched her eyes. And credit to the Alcorn State defense for coming up from behind and poking that out. We got to have a tip play here with two tenths. Is that the definition? Look at that. Wow. They're going to wave it off, but that was executed perfectly. Tompkins did not tip it. She caught it. And that was the difference. But that was about the only thing that went wrong. Wichita State leading after one. You're watching The American on WSU-TV. Duncan's new cold brew coffee. Steeped slowly in cold water for small batches with an ultra smooth full body flavor. Discover the craft of cold brew today and keep on. America runs on Duncan.
Wichita State, a hot first quarter here on WSU TV. Shane Dennis, Ben and Garrick, the Roundhouse, Shockers, pretty much an avalanche of points. And Alcorn State didn't have an answer. Two out of 15 for the Lady Braves from the floor. Conversely, the Shockers, 11 of 15. That's pretty much the story. 17 to two run over the last seven minutes plus for Wichita State. And Yesterday, Shane, we talked about the search for a complete 40 minutes of basketball. The Shockers never really put it together against Chicago State just in flashes offensively, but that first quarter was really something to behold. It all started finding Rangy Bassard inside, but then it was Angie Tompkins who started to pick up the slack with six points and almost had eight, just barely after the horn on that beautifully executed tip play in the last two tenths of a second. But that was about the only thing that didn't go the Shockers' way in what was a beautiful first quarter and seven different Shockers scored. Everybody that attempted a shot except for Julia Preston made at least one. Of course, when you only miss four, that's pretty easy to see, but boy, Wichita State, and you referenced it a second ago, and I don't know if we said it on the telecast last night or I just thought it, but it looked like at different points last night, both teams, Wichita State and Chicago were in quicksand. I mean, it was, it was a hard to watch basketball game at times because of the lack of the continuity offensively. But Wichita State has totally turned the page here tonight. Just stagnant offense. You'd see a lot of possessions where it was 20 seconds of one player dribbling, no ball rotation, no movement, and it ended up with a lot of bad shots, a lot of turnovers, and a game that was, I'm sure, not particularly pleasing to Keith Adams, even though she got a W out of it. Well, they survived, and that's about all you can say. So they move on and obviously took whatever instruction to heart less than 24 hours later. Really efficient first quarter. Battle of the backups here in quarter number two. Lockhart steps through off the heel, stays with it, but Lady Braves come away with a rebound as Tia Sanders, who has been really, really quiet. 20 point a game score has nary a shot. We'll see if she's able to get some freedom without Ambrosio guarding her. That is. A, a tough matchup for anyone with Ambrosio's long arms and that angular frame. Near turnover, now a tie ball. will keep it on this end. Back in there for the Bra Lady Braves, uh, Jada Hargrove, who had a couple of points in that first quarter. Only she and Alexis Freeman scored. Freeman had six of their eight, and Jada Hargrove had the other two. Asia Finney in there for the first time for ASU. Freeman jumps it up and scores it. Starting to look a little bit like Taisha Bowers yesterday where yeah. it's just one source of offense and it's kind of hard to have sustainable runs when you're relying on one player as heavily as Chicago State did last night and Alcorn State is so far this evening. First basket in a long time by the Lady Braves right there. Preston, one dribble too many. She, as we mentioned at the outset, didn't really get into a flow at all yesterday. Two points, two rebounds, 14 minutes, foul trouble, and, and much like her game, the entire game went. Not much flow to it. Over the last several weeks, she's gotten pretty good at one or two dribbles after a ball fake and then taking that short mid-range pull up. But like you said there, one dribble too many, that's too much time that allows the defender to slide over, make sure that they're outside the circle and take the charge. Poked away nicely by Preston. It ends up in the hands of Kiki Thompson and she lays it in. That's that athleticism and speed you're talking about in the open court. She really can be a game changer and can be a changer on both sides of the ball as well. She has very active hands, gets in a lot of passing lanes, creates turnovers, and then can capitalize on the other end. Back-to-back -back turnovers by Alcorn State. That one's a carry. That's their seventh turnover here in the first, not quite 12 minutes. Kiki Thompson with four points here tonight. Came in averaging 6.3, but had missed her last three games due to injury. Well, that was a high degree of difficulty, and Bassard almost spun it in with the left hand. Another situation, I think, where she would be well served to just 
gather it, take a second, and then give it her best jump at the rim. That was a tough catch, and she was already kind of spinning towards the basket and just flailed it off balance. Just needs to calm down for a half a second. She would have been in a great position to score. It goes a long way in illustrating what kind of high efficiency Wichita State's been playing with tonight off on the offensive end. When you talk about this day and age where Wichita State is in the vast minority and that they don't even look for three-pointers most of the time down. Wild shot off the right side by Alexis Freeman. And that's just a credit to Keitha Adams and her players for buying in, running the offense, and continuing to move. Like you said, when they got in trouble yesterday, it was stagnant, a lot of standing around. Only You don't see many teams in college basketball that only take three threes yeah. like they did yesterday. They haven't taken one so far this afternoon. And it's, it just makes things easier when you can shoot from three because it spaces out the defense. So you can still score without the benefit of the three-point shot. It's just things are kind of compressed. Your spacing and your movement better be good. And so far in this game tonight, it has been. Thompson with a three, left alone. Kiki Thompson has seven early points for the Shockers. And it's been all Wichita State here tonight. That is her first three-point make of the season. Was 0 for 4 prior to that one, but stepped into it like she's been making them all year. Bernard fouled, and we'll go to the line. I think last night at some point we said it's just going to be one of those nights for Wichita State. On the flip side, it looks like tonight may be one of those nights for Wichita State on the good end. Jamesha Bernard averages about two a game, spins that one in. She did not score last night. And prior to that free throw make, she was two of 14 from the charity stripe this season. So, I'm sure according to the scouting report, when in doubt, Foul. Hacker, yeah. yeah. Hacker Bernard doesn't have quite the same range. Doesn't though. roll off the tongue quite as much, but point is good. Nice deflection by DeAsia Brown, but Wichita State comes up to the possession after all. Good job by Bassard, staying involved in the play, got her hands active from behind, and was able to generate the steal, get the Shockers an extra possession. Bassard had it stripped, and I think you are on to something now, Denning. Uh, Rangy Bassard playing a little quick, just a little too fast. A blocking foul in transition that didn't please Jalea Preston. That'll be her second. Sanders ran a long way with the basketball and may have gotten away with the travel before there was any contact as Preston had to take that one right in the ribs. Rangy Bussard was trailing her the whole way and Jalea Preston had her eyes on her near the rim but just slid over at the last moment. Free throw no good. Tia Sanders, 20.4 a game. 14 last night, none so far here tonight. It's been in double figures every game this season and more than 20 points five times. So this is an aberration to be sure. No shots from the field either. And it'll stay at this end as the Shockers can't get a rebound on a pair of missed free throws by Tia Sanders. Sanders, by the way, 83.3% from the line. So this is a bizarro game so far between the Shockers and Lady Braves. What's weird too is she's just been away from the action. Yes. On the offensive end, she'll be on the complete opposite side of the ball for most of a possession. Partially blocked by Kiki Thompson on the perimeter. And they're gonna call a foul, or a travel rather, on Rangy Bussard. Animated young lady, isn't she? <laughs> she will let you know if she disagrees. Play starting to get a little bit ragged here in the second quarter. Chloe Lane subs in for the Lady Braves. Well, last night they went 29.7% from the floor and they backed it up with 16.7 so far here tonight. They have been ice cold. And a step back three is no good. There's your first shot for Tia Sanders. Rangy Bissard 
especially careful to make sure Crystal Apollonis didn't call a second travel in the backcourt. <laughs> and a good job, too, by Ambrosio making herself available to catch the outlet. Alicia Fay got the errant shot, which may have been partially blocked. The shot clock still going. Ambrosio spins, forces, and is fouled with five to shoot. Good strong take past Jada Hargrove. She might have something with that little spin move. Mm -hmm. It's deceptively quick, kind of creates just enough separation where she gets a foot in front of a defender, and by that point, she'll be within striking distance of the rim. Missed the first of two from the free throw line and also showing a, an ability and a willingness to go to the left hand. So if there's a scouting report to park it on her right hand, she's going to give people another thing to think about. Rangy Bassard with an offensive rebound and a putback. That's her fourth point. Been a while since her basket back in the first quarter. And stepping on the end line is DeAsia Brown. Another turnover for Alcorn State. That's been a killer for them. Nine now. And impressive that Wichita State's been able to put up 30 points in a quarter and a half with very little contributions from Bassard. Typically, she's going to be right in the middle of any offensive output. Well, a lot of balance. Kiki Thompson has seven. Cesaria Ambrosio has four. Only averages 2.8. Just about everybody's getting into the act a little bit, so that's helped cover for a quiet rangy Bassard. Stovall partially blocked. Faye couldn't squeeze it. Lady Braves back the other way. In a hurry they come. Hargrove cut off. Lane in the lane, travels. Turnover number 10 for Lady Braves. Timeout on the floor. It's been all shockers all the time, all night. They lead it by 19 on WSU TV. Utah State doing just about everything right here on the final night of the Shocker Winter Classic. Looking for their 10th consecutive victory in this winter get together every year. Alcorn State struggling to score. No such problem for Wichita State. 63.6 from the floor for Wichita State and still ice, ice cold for Alcorn State from the fleet. Yeah, if you're not Alexis Freeman, it has been tough sledding to say the least. No baskets for anyone not named her and uh, Alcorn State just having a hard time initiating any kind of offense. The Shockers have done a good job staying active in the passing lanes. You saw the turnover created there that led to the Kiki Thompson layup, but also just a good job of getting into a flow on the offensive end. Ambrosio has done what she did a lot of last night, and that is making plays with the shot clock running down. And even though she was quiet early, Rangy Bassard still making an impact on the glass with a team leading five boards. Alexis Freeman is 3 of 9 from the floor. The rest of the team is 0 of 10. Freeman has 8 of their 11 points. She came in averaging 16 a game, but the story so far for Alcorn State is the fact that Tia Sanders, who averages 20 a game, has shot just one time. She missed a three-pointer, missed both of her free throws. Hasn't been a foul issue necessarily. It's been Wichita State, obviously, with recognition that she's a big part of their offense, so let's tighten down a little bit. I mean, this started with Ambrosio on her, and she is, I think, Wichita State's best on-ball defender just with her length and her quickness, but ultimately, it's been kind of a team effort. Shockers have shuttled a couple of players around and really done a good job of slowing her down. Ambrosio, six-foot guard, brings it up against some token pressure. 
Alcorn State has never led. Ambrosio with the pitch out into the opposite corner, and that was maybe a skip pass one too many. And maybe she could have finished at the rim, Yeah, too. that's exactly what I was thinking. It, that's a pass you don't necessarily need to make. No one slid over to force her to give up the basketball. And until a offender helps, keep driving. Angle three is good. Christian DeWitt. That's the third made three by the Lady Braves. And about the only thing, Denning, from keeping this from being a total destruction is the Shockers' eight turnovers. Now, that is what Alcorn State hangs its hat on, but if the Shockers had taken a little bit better care of the ball and saved a few more possessions, they'd really be in the driver's seat even more. Bassard with a nice feed ends up with six, thanks to Cesare Ambrosio with the high low. Now, last three, by the way, from DeWitt was her first make of the season. She was 0 for her first 13. But that was better ball movement, too, a drive that forced Wichita State's defense to react. A force, and DeWitt answers five points on two possessions. She's already got her average. She had three last night against ORU. Big hill to climb for Alcorn State after that frigid start from the floor. Final three minutes of the half. Shockers comfortably in front. Good look to Ambrosio from Andre Stovall. Great setup there as Andre Stovall drove towards her defender to create a little bit of space and then Ambrosio had locked eyes with her. They were on the same page. Nice backdoor cut in the finish. Line drive three rattles out for Chloe Lane. And this is an interesting lineup because the Shockers basically have three point guards out there with Stovall, Lockhart, and Ambrosio, and then two posts in Lozada, Cabbage, and Bissard. Stovall for three, too hard. Rebound, Tia Sanders. In a big hurry is DeWitt, and she has seven off the bench. Christian DeWitt. Really ultra aggressive offensively, trying to get the Bra Lady Braves back in it. We saw a lot of that from them yesterday against Oral Roberts. If there was any kind of a transition opportunity, they were going to drive until someone stopped them. But that has been a part of the game that has not been really present so far this evening. And DeWitt showing a little bit of it there with a nice finish. Bassard and one. Well, she's got a hair trigger. It doesn't take her long to get that ball up and toward the rim. It sometimes gets her into trouble whenever right. she doesn't set her feet, but she can also get off shots that no one else can because she's so quick with her release and is very good at the catch and spin almost in the same motion. It just frees her up enough to get the shot away. Neither team's been to the line much tonight in Wichita State. Only one of three so far from there. Bassard with nine. She uncharacteristically missed three free throws last night. She's normally an excellent foul shooter. Shockers back up by 19 again. Matches their biggest lead of the night. And near steal by Bassard. Couldn't keep it inbounds. She's been asked to do a lot of guarding on the perimeter against this relatively small Alcorn State team. So she's been matched up against a guard and will probably be thinking about that one in her dreams. That was right into the hand, but couldn't squeeze it. Both hands, but neither one at the same time. Nice runner off the glass by Tia Sanders. Her first basket. It's only a matter of time before a 20 point per game score gets going. You just have to ensure that that doesn't lead to much bigger things in the second half. Pretty cleanly played second quarter, only five total fouls. Pretty good flow to it. And you gotta credit Wichita State for running their offense. They've been a crisp unit on this end of the floor. Angie Tompkins, again, the ball seems to find her always. She and Angie Bassard collide and both diving to keep it in bounds. Fortunately, both are okay, although it's easy for me to say. 
will never have to question the effort of Angie Tompkins. She's going to give 100% every time. Ooh. Unfortunately, Bassard also gave 100% there, and it led to a bit of a collision. You can see the left ankle get tweaked underneath of Tompkins' body, but she's going to stay in there and try to just walk it off. That left ankle by uh, Rangy Bassard got trapped underneath the diving Angie Tompkins. Congratulations to a job well done by one of the Shocker cheerleaders. <laughs> <laughs> a little housekeeping. Rangy Bassard did it yesterday. Yep. Member of the Shocker Spirit Squad doing it today. Final minute of the first half. Been dominated by the Shockers. There's a steal that Bassard was looking for. And she's fouled near half court, trying to lead a one on three. Braves had a couple to give. And probably best for Wichita State that probably. that ended in a foul. Is probably. Not that Ranger Bassard isn't exceptionally talented, but leading the one on three break, not necessarily a, a recipe for good things. Five seconds separate the shot and game clock. Good to see Kiki, Tompkins, uh, Kiki Thompson back out there after a, a brief absence. She's played a good first half, got seven points. Ten to shoot. Stovall needs to go. Now to Thompson right wing. Stovall, elbow jumper, rattles in. That's really been the first half for the Shockers in a microcosm. Four seconds, three. And a great first half by Wichita State. That equals their largest lead of the game. 39 to 20 in the Shocker Winter Classic. Wichita State trying to get to five and eight. You're watching the Shockers. Uh, WSU TV. Duncan's new cold brew coffee. Steeped slowly in cold water for small batches with an ultra smooth full body flavor. Discover the craft of cold brew today and keep on. America runs on Duncan. While Wichita State was probably frustrated and disappointed at halftime in the game against Chicago State last night, Denning, the total opposite for Keitha Adams in the locker room, you would imagine right now, balance and efficiency in that first half against Alcorn State. Shooting 64% from the field. Not a whole lot went wrong on the offensive side of the ball. They did a very good job of moving the basketball. There was just good fluidity to the offense. A lot of players moving to the right spots on the court. Cesare Ambrosio kind of kept things flowing. And Ranger Bassard, after a slow start, ended up leading the way with her nine points. Just very well balanced. A lot of good things from the Shockers. Alcorn State makes its living on forcing turnovers, getting steals. They average 12 steals a game. They turn the other team over nearly 24 times a game. Only got three steals themselves and Wichita State just went crazy offensively with their balance 
and high shooting percentages. Only three points off of turnovers for Alcorn State. You can live with the turnovers just because the Braves are going to force so many. It's the live ball turnovers that create opportunities for runouts and transition, and that's what Wichita State really kept to a minimum and a big reason why they have a 19-point lead. Well, the Shockers hit five of their first seven shots from the floor, and you think, okay, that's great, but it's probably not sustainable. Well, it has been sustainable here in the first half. They shot 64% as we saw on the graphic earlier. Well, it wasn't sustainable with Alexis Freeman, who got off to such a hot start. She had those eight quick points early. You figured it might be another one-man show, and Wichita State ultimately was able to use their balance to kind of overcome that and really put the hammer down as that second quarter came to a close. And that highlight just a moment ago, we saw Tia Sanders dump in a left-handed banker. That was her only basket. She comes in averaging 20, so that probably uh, gets them out of rhythm a little bit when their leading score is basically invisible. And as we mentioned, she was invisible in a way that it wasn't even involved in the offense. They didn't get the ball in her hands. They didn't really give her opportunities to create plays in addition to those that kind of come about naturally. And so it, I would imagine that Alcorn State will really try and emphasize getting her the basketball in the second half, but the Shockers did a fantastic job on her. See if Wichita State can stack 20 more minutes together after a nearly flawless first half. 39 to 20, You're watching the American on WSU TV. One in four people will suffer from some form of mental illness in any given year. And collegiate student athletes are not immune. Mental health issues do not judge or discriminate. They impact all of us. As athletes, mental health carries a stigma of weakness. That is the opposite of what we want to portray. When we experience a physical injury, we have a team of medical professionals to ensure a speedy recovery. But a mental health issue, that can leave us feeling confused lonely, abandoned, and unsure of where to turn. We might feel embarrassed to talk about it out of fear of judgment from our teammates, coaches, trainers, or fans. You all know the sayings. Suck it up. You're just having a bad day. You will get over it. If you're physically tough, you're also mentally tough. It's time. It's time. It's time. It's time to break the stigma. The American Athletic Conference has teamed up to bring awareness to mental health this year. In sport and in life, a healthy mind is a powerful mind. It's okay to not be okay. Talk about it. You are not alone. Every day, we're given the opportunity to help get a broader understanding of mental health, overcome stereotypes, and break down barriers. We can all do a little bit more each day to help eliminate the stigma and replace it with help and hope. Together, we can make a difference by spreading support, awareness, and understanding. Join, Join us. us. Join us. Join us. Join us. Join us. And together, we will break the stigma. Shot country, one, two, three, shot! Yes. Introducing Dunkin's new cold brew coffee. Steeped slowly in cold water for small batches with an ultra smooth, full body flavor. Discover the craft of cold brew today and keep on. America runs on Dunkin'. Shockers with one more half to wrap up the Shocker Winter Classic. Then they'll have one more game before the American Athletic Conference starts. That'll come two weeks from now against Tulsa in the latest edition of Havoc in the Heartland. There you see the conference standings, as we mentioned yesterday, two-thirds of the team at 500 or better. 
Wichita State trying to get a little closer to 500 and trying to make it three victories in a row after UMKC, Chicago State now here tonight leading by 19 at halftime. In case you missed it, the conference player and freshman of the week in the American, Mia Davis on right there, the freshman from Temple, a back-to-back -back winner as she averaged a double-double in her games last weekend, week in, week in. And there you see Rangy Bassard of Wichita State, a member of the weekly honor roll. Speaking of Wichita State, the volleyball team, as you and I well know, Denning, had another historic year. And congratulations to Tabitha Brown, named an honorable mention to All-American, uh, as well as AVCA All-Region honorable mention this year. Top 10 in the American in kills per set. And she helped Wichita State having the top offense in the league that averaged nearly 14 kills per set. So tip of the cap to Tabitha Brown, also her teammate, a senior middle blocker, Abby Lehman, named second team senior class award, All-American. She was just out of this world this year in block assist, hitting, percentage, total blocks, you name it, she did it. Abby Lehman with a tremendous uh, ending to her volleyball career. And not surprisingly, Chris Lamb's gonna have some uh, coaching awards come flowing in his way. The Volleyball uh, North Region Coach of the Year. 18th year at the helm. He went 29 and 4, 20 and 0 in the conference, and of course, conference coach of the year. So, to the victor go the spoils, and a good job by the volleyball team this year going 29 and 4. I'm going to use at least a minute of your time to, to lobby for Abby Lehman, as probably should have been an All American in some form or fashion. Not really sure how a conference player of the year doesn't get All American status, but heck of a season for her, heck of a career, one of the best in Shocker history. Here, here. More Shocker basketball when we come back. Introducing Dunkin's new cold brew coffee. Steeped slowly in cold water for small batches with an ultra smooth, full bodied flavor. Discover the craft of cold brew today and keep on. America runs on Dunkin. Shockers made seven of their first nine shots in this one to sprint out to an early 15 to eight lead and really didn't cool off all that much after that. They were red hot and they followed up a 23 point first quarter with a 16 point second quarter. Maybe the only thing that kind of slowed them down a little bit, Denning, was turnovers, but offensive efficiency, certainly not a problem. Yeah, shooting 64% from the floor that the search for the Strong 40 minutes continues, but an excellent start. A, a first half in which there's not much to complain about on the offensive side of the ball. They got the post players involved. Bassard and Lazada Cabbage getting some nice touches in addition to Angie Tompkins having a nice first half. And then the ball movement on the perimeter was very good as well. Opening up driving lanes, creating opportunities to attack the basket and then dump off to additional players if the help side defense comes. 
Finally, Freeman got some help late in the first half. Christian DeWitt came off the bench to score seven points on a perfect three of three, as you see there. But the Shockers held the Lady Braves to just four assists and 11 turnovers. So it kind of gave them a dose of their own medicine. The, the stagnant offense that we talked about so much from yesterday was really present with Alcorn State. They were having a hard time just getting the ball into the hands of their playmakers and doing anything to create good shots. It was DeWitt either in transition or the beneficiary of a pass, the only way in which the Braves got any kind of quality shot attempts. And a great job, as we mentioned, going up against Sanders, holding her just two points on two shots. First five Shocker baskets came from five different Shocker players. Seven scored. Everybody had more than or at least three or more points in that first half. So offense was the theme of the first half. We'll see how the second 20 minutes plays out right after this. State trying to make it three in a row, wrap up this little homestand and wrap up the Shocker Winter Classic. From here, they'll go to South Dakota State in four days, and then it'll be 10 more days until they play another game, but they'll have a good long time to get ready for Tulsa and the American Conference play. Shane Dennis, Den and Gary, you're at Charles Coke Arena. A little bit later on, it'll be Oral Roberts and Chicago State to wrap up the Shocker Winter Classic and their back-to-back -back nights of women's basketball. The Shocker's trying to make it 10 in a row in their own little invitational little 14 get-together for the fifth year in a row. So we're just about ready for the third quarter. The Shockers really never threatened. They never trailed in that first half. And again, I got off such a, a hot start offensively. Al Alcorn State was fighting uphill virtually the entire half. It was 23 to eight after one. Wichita State ball, this is their biggest lead. They led at least three times by 19 points, including the final basket of the first half. Lockhart, mid lane, and the second half starts much like the first did. Diamond Lockhart has five. Great little back cut, too, from Diamond Lockhart. She sold that she was going to just continue to rotate around the perimeter, made one hard jab step, then cut towards the lane, and Rangy Bassard was on the same page to a bullet pass to hit her in rhythm. We mentioned at the start of the telecast how Wichita State struggled with Chicago State. It wasn't if, as if they shot terribly, as Alexis Freeman gets bailed out and get a trip to the free throw line, you would think, here. But shooting 41.1 from the floor last night, old three from three-point range against Chicago State. They've only shot two three-pointers tonight. As we mentioned, it's not a big part of their offense. But boy, inside the arc, they have just been deadly. So much of it is ball movement and then moving without the basketball. It sounds elementary, but you have to constantly be active, searching for weak spots in the defense and the ball can move faster than a defender can. If you continue to rotate it, you're going to find open looks. Freeman's first two free throws. She now is in double figures with 10. She's got 10 of their 22. And we've re referenced it a couple of times as Ambrosio left hand scoops it up and in. She's got eight. You would imagine being so far down as Al Alcorn State is, they're gonna have to turn up the pressure defensively sooner or later. And that's 
really what they're known for to begin with, forcing nearly 23 turnovers a game. So Shockers are going to have to be strong with the ball from here on out. Strong with the ball, but they're going to get opportunities too in transition. There will be run out chances where they have a three on two or even a three on one break and will have to take advantage. Broussard left it short with a left hand, back up and scores it. A Moses Malone special, offensive <laughs> rebound and Pat score. Patting the stats. That's a good example, though, of what I was talking about earlier, where she has such good position after the catch. She could just be strong with the basketball, kind of rotate, get herself in a better spot, as opposed to trying to force it up right after the catch. I feel like, in general, that's going to really benefit her. Bessard in double figures yet again. Two of two from the free throw line. 12 points. Shocker lead has risen to 24. Ambrosio all on alone underneath for the rebound. Here's a run out you were talking about. Bessard in transition, draws a block. She'll go back to the free throw line where she is very, very good. Did a little bit of everything on that possession. They had her guarding the five foot four Alexis Freeman, forced her into a guarded long two on the perimeter and then leaked out in transition as Ambrosio was able to crash the defensive glass and then got the eyes up in time to see her streaking free. Jada Hargrove's second personal foul. Bassard back to the free throw line. She had 18 points last night, but only four of eight. Actually, she missed four free throws last night. I said she missed three. That was really rare for her to go four out of eight. And back-to-back -back nights, she's been doing a little mopping, helping out the ball girl down there underneath. Shockers by 25, and they have come out with the kind of focus here in the third quarter that you'd hope. Denning and I were singing their praises throughout the entire halftime show about how good they were offensively, and honestly, when you're up 19, sometimes the words from the coaching staff are just noise. You, you know you're way ahead, and you can afford to take a couple of possessions off. Easy to get lack of days yeah. for sure, and this is the kind of game where it'll, it'll be a good test for Wichita State. Can they remain focused? Can they continue to operate at a high level? Because they haven't had many games this year where they've put together a strong four quarters consecutively. And honestly, if that happens, this could be a teaching moment for Keitha Adams. If the, her players aren't playing the way she wants them to, it'll be easy to take them out, get their attention, make sure they continue to play at a high level. But that's not been a problem yet. Well, the way Alcorn really denies hard on the perimeter, that backdoor cut has been available pretty much all evening long. And this is a very good pass from Andre Stovall to a cutting Rangy Bissar. That was a tight window and then forced it up to draw the foul. Missed by Bissard from the line. but And you also run into the possibility of the danger zone, whatever you want to call it, of players getting selfish. You know, when you know the game is well in hand, the natural tendency could be to, okay, I need to get mine now because so-and-so is getting theirs. But so far, again, as you mentioned, sharing the ball and moving, sign of unselfish play. Three in the corner wouldn't go, and Alcorn State to start the third quarter almost exactly like they started the first quarter, and that's not being able to buy a bucket. Three for Lockhart. She All been, shockers tonight. She had been pretty quiet in the early going, but stepped into that three with some confidence. She's got eight points and is already closing in on her season average as the balance continues. Shockers by 30. Freeman too hard. Lozada Cabbage kept it alive for Ambrosio. Three on two break. Almost an impossible catch, but Bassard got it anyway. Lozada Cabbage with the offensive rebound and put back. And boy, the roof is caving in on the Lady Braves right now. A little surprise Courtney Pruitt hasn't asked for a timeout right now. It is all shockers all the time. DeWitt knifes in, and really she's been a bright spot off the bench for Alcorn State. She's got a chance in an add one. She had seven points in the blink of an eye in the first half. Chloe Lane and 
Angie Tompkins check in for the Lady Braves and Shockers respectively. Christian DeWitt came in averaging four and a half a game. She has 10. And she joins Alexis Freeman in double figures. So it's been the DeWitt and Freeman show. They have 20 of the 25 points for their team. Stovall with a runner, no good, but as you alluded to, Denning, the ball's not staying in anyone's hands for any extended period of time at all. Just moving quickly around the perimeter and giving drivers the opportunities to have nice lanes to attack the basket or nice backdoor cuts. It's just been a very fluid offense and an offense that seems to just kind of be getting comfortable, I think. Tompkins with a rebound. Alcorn State came into this game tonight averaging right at 71 points a game, and that's with only 52 last night against Oral Roberts. So they're capable of scoring some points. But last night only 52, and again, tonight they can't throw it in the ocean. Brianna Tolliver will check in for Alcorn State. Shockers by 19 at halftime, and it's gotten progressively worse for Alcorn State. Late in the shot clock. Lockhart rolls it in. Boy, the Shockers are getting virtually whatever they want tonight. And Diamond Lockhart is starting to develop into a legitimate late in the shot clock option. She has both a left and a right hand that she can really attack with. Has a good quick first step and the willingness and ability to pull up in the lane from that mid-range area. Deflected in the lane, near travel. Tompkins defensive rebound. Tompkins last night had eight rebounds, but seven of them were offensive. And she, it could be argued, Denning, was the big reason why Wichita State won against Chicago State. No one player is any more important than everybody else, but she really bailed them out late. And provided energy in a game that didn't have a whole lot of it. Sure. When everyone was kind of sleepwalking, she was the only player who was coming off the bench, fired up, and making plays, and the Shockers needed every one of them. Good fi uh, first five minutes of the third quarter for Wichita State here in the Shocker Winter Classic on WSU-TV. When the Shockers led by 19 at half, you wondered if they could keep up the offensive intensity and intensity overall. I know a lot of times getting it in the locker room, coaches in one way or another refer to playing as if it's 0-0 or don't look at the clock or don't play to the score. Wichita State, whatever the message, certainly has delivered maybe even a better beginning of the third quarter than the first. I don't feel like these two games really when you when you zoom out can can help Wichita State moving forward last night against Chicago State a game in which they did not play particularly well got a win out of it just kind of the ability to win ugly and then you fast forward to tonight it's an opportunity to put together a full 40 minutes to kind of put the foot down not let a team back into a game 
they have had problems at times this year letting opponents just kind of hang around did so in the UMKC game and tonight an opportunity to just say we've got a 15 to 20 point lead we're going to stretch it out rather than let you trim into it the Shockers in the first quarter made seven of their first nine shots they've made six of their first nine here in the third quarter they're right at 65 percent for the game and they have outscored Alcorn State in the third quarter 17 to 5 and they lead by 31. They led by as many as 32. And this kind of goes without saying when you mention all those stats, but they have really done an excellent job on the glass as well. Out rebounding the Braves by 10 after they out rebounded Chicago State by 15 yesterday. So that could be something the Shockers can hang their hat on moving forward. Alcorn State forces nearly 23 turnovers a game. The Shockers have given it away just eight times. And Wichita State will be called for a player control foul, and that will count as a turnover, and it'll go back to Alcorn State. Cesaria Ambrosio, for one reason or another, heading back into the tunnel, so you hope that's not anything serious. As Wichita State goes to the bench here in the latter half of the third quarter. Corner three by DeWitt, no good. Good rebound by Alicia Fay. She's another girl who's kind of starting to find her role on this team as a screener, good rebounder. She's capable of making an extended jump shot, just hasn't had many opportunities to do so this year. And there's an overplay and a steal by Alexis Freeman. Freeman lays it up and in. She's got 12. Eighth in the country and steals coming in. She is lightning quick and willing to gamble a little bit in the passing lanes too. She will go after the basketball. She nearly had one on Ontra Stovall right around half court just a couple minutes ago. That's her second steal here tonight. Good screen and roll to Tompkins and I, I'm not exactly sure about that. I can see why it looked like it, but don't you have to allow Angie Tompkins a place to come down on the screen and roll. She came to a jump stop and the official Tom Danaher thought it was a charge on Tompkins. Tough call. Not a big fan of that call, really. It's just there's nothing Angie Tompkins can do about it. That's a pass leading her into a defender sliding over at the last second. It's good help rotation defense, but hard to blame Angie Tompkins for the result. Staying after it on the offensive end was Brianna Tolliver, but hasn't been able to cash it in just yet. See if she gets a third opportunity. That'll be a foul out on the floor on the drive by Christian DeWitt. Hold on, Julia Preston. Nobody in any real foul danger, unless you want to count that third foul by Julia Preston. Shockers up comfortably by 29. Very little has gone wrong for Wichita State tonight. Well, very little went right for them a night ago. Alcorn State continues to be in the deep freeze. They've made only one field goal here in the quarter. Their shooting percentage has fallen below 26%. They can't make a free throw but they will stay on this end. We've been on this end forever, and <laughs> Alcorn State just can't find the basket. Tolliver to key it in, the Lady Braves. Deflected, stolen by Wichita State. What'd you say that Lady Braves had last night in the turnover column, 25, 26. They forced 26. Forced 26. They only had 11. Wow. Which is what's incredible, the, the fact that Oral Roberts was able to cruise despite the fact that they lost the turnover battle as handily as they did. <laughs> there we go, late shot clock again. Diamond Lockhart just making something happen. And that time, instead of pulling up for the mid-range, tried to take it all the way to the basket, so she's really mixing up her offensive looks. Hat tip to Weston Fletcher, who's 
done a great job with the, the stats in the media for Wichita State this season. He had an excellent breakdown of Diamond Lockhart from last year to this year and just how much more aggressive she's been. She already has more made field goals this season than she did all of last year. And just at times looked tentative in the early part of her Wichita State career, but this season, maybe it's just a wake-up call of, hey, I'm a senior, this is it, this is my last go-round, but she is willing to drive to the basket, willing to finish amongst the trees, in addition to showing off the jump shot. Two free throws go down for Diamond Lockhart, senior from Red Oak, Texas. And to Denning's point, in almost every area of her game, she's already exceeded last year's output. Field goals, field goals attempted, free throws made, free throws attempted, points. Rebounds will be a few games from now. Assist a couple of games from now and steals a couple of games from now. She's going to just blow all those numbers out of the water and it's I don't know if it's as simple as just being more aggressive, but certainly the mindset has changed for her. It just it looks like a very different player, and it's been a, a marked change and a very exciting one for Shocker fans. Is the senior backcourt? It is very experienced with her and Stovall and Jalea Preston. Kiki Thompson, a senior as well. That's four senior guards. Not many teams can boast that in their rotation. Third foul against Alexis Freeman. Kiki Thompson got shoved to the ground. She's got seven points. Both teams over the limit for the final two minutes. Be shooting free throws. Andre Stovall checks in for Wichita State, giving Lockhart a rest. Diamond Lockhart goes to the bench with 12 points, three rebounds, and an assist. Kiki dumps in the second of two. She's got eight. You saw the graphic there. She's already beyond her points per game average. Lead is 30. It's been as many as 32. Three-pointer splashed in by Alexis Freeman. That's her third triple. She's had very little help tonight. Timeout called by Keitha Adams just ahead of potential danger of what she saw in the three-quarter court as Kiki Thompson was trapped there. Well, Shane, it wouldn't have been surprising if we had seen Alcorn State getting a majority of their points from two players. I guess we just thought it would be Freeman and Sanders. Sure. Instead, it's been Freeman and DeWitt as Sanders has been pretty much a non-factor. You can catch the latest episode of On Pace with Shocker Track and Field. On Pace keeps you up to date with all the latest Wichita State track and field news. This week's shows will recap the first two indoor meets of the season, Shocker Multi and WSU Inter-Squad Meet. And we'll count down the top five performances of the young indoor season and also catch up with road racers, Rachel Stuckey and Tanya Nero. On Pace with Shocker Track and Field only on WSU TV's YouTube channel. Yeah, Tia Sanders... Denning was referring earlier, she and Alexis Freeman combined for about 36 points per game. Freeman's held up her end, but Tia Sanders has two points on two shots. And you hate to be critical, but if Alcorn State, you would think, and this, of course, we can go back all the way to the second quarter when Wichita State sprinted out to a 23 to 8 lead, you almost have to start drawing up some plays for, but it was either Wichita State's scheme or just the unwillingness to try to do that to, to stay in the game. A 20 point score has two points tonight. I think a combination of both and it's really been somewhat shocking to watch the, the fact that she has not been involved in their offense at all considering how much of a part she has played this entire season. She had a season low 29 minutes against Oral Roberts yesterday but still had 14 points and last year made the second most threes in the entire SWAC conference. So she is more than capable of putting up points in bunches and just hasn't had any opportunities to do so tonight. And in addition to what we just said, nobody could make a basket for Alcorn State. I mean, they were ice cold from the floor and she wouldn't even get the touch. Yeah, so would, wouldn't you think that would then make you want to give the ball to think, your best scorer? I right? would think, but again, you, you credit Wichita State for keeping it out of her hands and making sure that the the players for Alcorn State continue to miss. And the Shockers, of course, have done a nice job on the boards, too, on those misses, and there have been a lot of them. Shockers have made two three-pointers tonight, and they have 
40 points in the paint. 40 of their 59 have come in the paint. They've only turned it over 11 times to 14 for the Lady Braves. Final minute and a half of the third here as Wichita State has led throughout, never trailed. Well, it looks like Alcorn State's ready to throw everything at the Shockers right now. All five players are well over half court. As they should be. This is you're either going to make your run right here or Wichita State's going to continue to blow their doors off. Tom, uh, Thompson had it knocked away from behind, but it'll stay on the shocker end. Shocker's second unit in there right now trying to keep it where it is, and it's a nice option to go to underneath Angie Tompkins. She's got eight. That's her first basket of the second half. I like how Keith Adams keeps it relatively simple on those baseline out-of-bounds plays. A lot of times it's just a lob-in isolation to a post player, either Bassard or Tompkins, and then let her go to work against a smaller defender. Well, we've got that height and bulk advantage, absolutely. Never a bad idea. That three-pointer bombed in by Freeman. It's her fourth. So the beat goes on for her, but Shocker's doing a good job of holding everybody else down. Freeman has 18. The entire arena yelled wolf there. <laughs> it's one thing to beat pressure, but you know the help's coming from behind. And a grab by DeAsia Brown. Preston is scoreless tonight. She'll go to the line for a pair. Shockers, nine out of 13 from the free throw line. Just so-so for them. Normally, they're much better than that. This is a player in Preston, too, who Wichita State could really use moving forward. Last year, her and Tamara Lee formed a nice one-two punch on the perimeter. They can both really shoot it, but it has been slow going. Of course, Lee has been limited by injuries, and Preston, her shooting has been up and down at times this year. And Preston just inexplicably picked up her fourth foul. So she'll send, I believe, Brianna Tolliver to the free throw line. Brianna Tolliver shooting two for the Braves. Final 35 seconds of the third quarter, dominated by Wichita State. Rosada Cabbage checks in for Tompkins. Bassard with 15, leading all Shockers. Lockhart with 12. Thompson, 8. Tompkins, 8. Ambrosio, 8. Both free throws dumped in by Tolliver. Freeman was just baiting that pass. She was waiting on Faye to see Strovall streaking to the basket. And then she gets a lot of steals just by kind of lurking and then uses a burst of quickness to jump in passing lanes. Well, she's really fast, too. So if she baits you into a less than crisp pass, she's going to be in front of it before the intended target. One of the officials over near the monitor, Angela Lewis, looking at something that is beyond my comprehension right now. I don't know exactly what that would be. Feels like an opportunity if Alcorn State's going to be as aggressive as they will be on this full court press, just to send somebody long, create a little bit of spacing. It's very hard to find an open receiver when the court is this compressed and there's this many bodies in a small area. So even if that person going long isn't open, it just kind of frees things up a little. And there you have it. Nice call. But it was incomplete and well covered down the field. <laughs> Knocked away at the front at the last moment. But yeah, I was going to say, if anybody can throw a baseball pass, they're probably the ones that will be inbounding the ball from here on out because since somebody deep, that at least clears one extra person out of the backcourt. Didn't quite work out that time, and Alcorn State can virtually hold it for the final shot. 
been a tough third quarter for the Lady Braves. They'll have to shoot it with about two seconds on the game clock. That one goes up quicker than that. Air ball and an and one opportunity for Tolliver. I think Julia Preston just fouled out. Yes, she did. So not often you see somebody disqualified in the third quarter due to fouls, but we just saw it here tonight. Preston was in some foul trouble last night too, so she said a uh, winter classic she'd like to move on from. A little surprise Keith Adams didn't substitute for her when she picked up that fourth, but I think with 30 seconds left, the thought was that Shockers could run the last offensive possession and then get to the end of the quarter. That would have counted from Ambrosio. The 45-footer was just a little bit short, so three in the books, and the Shockers coasting here at Charles Coke Arena. Shockers have never trailed tonight against Alcorn State, just a day after getting all they wanted from Chicago State, 62 to 39, with 10 minutes left here in the Shocker Winter Classic. Shockers outscoring Alcorn in a high-scoring third quarter, 23 to 19, but the shooting percentage for Wichita State continues to be in the stratosphere, Denny. It's just been a, a very thorough offensive performance from them. I've been incredibly impressed with the balance that they've displayed. You know what Rangy Bassard's going to give you night in, night out, but the search has been for a complimentary scorer to go along with her. Diamond Lockhart has emerged in recent weeks, but the continued presence of Angie Tompkins, her aggressiveness on the offensive glass, and her willingness to just give 100% effort anytime she's out there gives the Shockers some nice pieces to work with, and this is a, a very pleasing performance for them offensively. Well, since you believe in the announcer jinx, try this one on for size, okay? All right. The, the single game percentage record from the floor in Shocker history is 65.4, set back in 1982. Wichita State right now is 64.1, and it's virtually been that way from the jump, from the very start. Shocker's been really tough to miss. Looking really forward to a 65.3 percent shooting <laughs> for Wichita State tonight. You can stop by the Shocker Sports Grill and Lanes two hours prior to all WSU men's basketball games and enjoy great game day specials on food and drinks. It's a perfect place to meet up with friends before all the men's home games. And if the Shocker's on the road, you can catch games on TV. Shocker Sports Grill and Lanes, lower level, the Radigan Student Center. Might have been a tough watch today if you went to the Radigan Student Center and wanted to watch the Wichita State mm -hmm. OU men's game. Shockers had a hard time holding down the Sooners. Yeah, we don't have to talk about that. Well, yeah. not really worth bringing up. Two players on the floor, and it looked like Chloe Lane got caught with her hand in the cookie jar, but nabbed Sabrina Lozada Cavage. They both went to the deck, and apparently Lane grabbed her after the ball trickled away. Well, one way or another, I'm sure Keith Adams will just be hoping for a clean fourth quarter. The last thing she wants is to put kind of a black mark on what has been a very good performance so far with things getting sloppy here late. A high scoring third quarter it was. Shockers with 23 to back up that 23 point first quarter. Fay for three. Ambrosio with the offensive rebound and put back. Boy, she's been 
quietly effective in this Shocker Winter Classic. Another stat stuffing evening for Cesaria Ambrosio. 10 points now, five rebounds and four assists. She just makes everything run smoother on the offensive side of the ball. Long rebound will be a team rebound for Wichita State. Shockers have been up big for really the entire match. That is a career high for Ambrosio, those 10 points. If there is a Shocker Winter Classic all tournament team, I would imagine she would be making a case to be on it. I think you might be right. Shocker's up 25. A minute and a half gone by, fourth quarter. Oh, teardrop runner by Kiki Thompson. Welcome back to the lineup, Kiki. Hadn't played in more than two weeks, but it's looked like there is essentially no rust. Same kind of quickness, same kind of burst. And it's going to be a very nice piece to integrate into the rotation for the Shockers. And there's going to be a Fanny Hawkinson sighting for Wichita State, too, as that shot grazed the right side of the rim. Hawkinson has played in one other game this year. The freshman from Stockholm, Sweden, checks in for Ambrosio. Job well done by Cesaria. One of a lot of international flavor on this Wichita State roster this season as assistant coach Ava Laskowska was integrating a bunch of those newcomers from overseas. And you referenced the fact that I'm sure Keitha Adams wants this final 8.02 to go as smoothly as possible, not only because of the score, but because of the combinations that you're having to play in the game. The five that are going to be out there the rest of the time probably haven't gotten a lot of game action with one another, so that cohesion will be put to the test as Tolliver spins one in on the drive. She's got eight. Nice finish by Tolliver, spinning her way through a couple of defenders, and... Got that shot up off balance, but had enough English on it to bank it off glass. Fay straight away throws it in. Alicia Fay, the first basket. There's the extended jumper that I talked about earlier. She has a very nice release, high arcing shot. Gets rid of it at the top of the jump, and if she shoots it in rhythm, it's gonna be very difficult to block. Just hasn't had many opportunities to let it fly this year. All shockers underneath for the rebound on the miss by Freeman. Lead up to 27. Shockers been ultra efficient on the offensive end tonight. A tripping foul on Tolliver. Two team fouls on Alcorn State here in the final quarter. Good form tackle that time by Tolliver. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta wrap up. Yeah. Was she involved in the incompletion earlier? That would be a pass breakup yes. and a solo tackle. You might have to take a look at the replay. Rosada Cabbage was open for a moment, then got covered up, and then has an opportunity for a three-point play. Rosada Cabbage now with eight, a chance for nine. Yeah, it was wide open initially, and I'm not sure that the inbounder saw her breaking three for that initial split second, but she managed to recover and then muscle it up through the contact by the friendly roll. That's 48 points in the paint now for Wichita State. Cabbage with eight points in holding. In a 29-point game, a blocking foul called. There's been a couple of calls, and we kind of make light of it, half jokingly, half serious. If nothing really happens, there's no real reason to call a foul. But I'm not an official either. There, there been nothing really happened on that previous foul call. Thompson is getting beat up for Wichita State. Kick deck again. And the last thing that Keith Adams wants to see is anyone go down, but especially Kiki Thompson. That is a player they can ill afford to lose after they just got her back. 
Lozada Cabbage with another offensive rebound and put back, and she'll have her second consecutive opportunity at a three-point play. The lead swells back to over 30 again. She's been described as kind of a grinder, always there to, to pick up on a missed opportunity and has a good knack for where shot is gonna miss, too. Nice hustle there to get to the weak side. Of the shot from Stovall came up short. She was right there to capitalize. Missed free throw just a moment ago. She'll get a redeemer here and throws it in. Lozada Cabbage joining a host of teammates in double figures. She's got 11. And a hyper-efficient 11, too. Five of five shooting. Line drive three from the left corner, no good. Foul on the rebound at Wichita State. Leading by 32. And we will be shooting free throws for the final 6-12 on every Lady Brave foul. I don't think anyone seems to realize that. Maybe we should communicate to, to the players on the floor. Stovall, four points tonight. Jockers 11 of 17 from the free throw line. They're actually better from the floor. 64.7 from the line tonight. That's no good. They came into this game 78% as a team from the free throw line. They were 20 out of 28 last night for 71.4. So some uncharacteristic messes in that last couple of games. Freeman got her own, set up her teammate, and Miracle rushing, maybe rushed the shot a little. Been waiting for that from you all night. <laughs> but she hasn't been in there to shoot it yet. A couple more free throws for Lozada Cabbage. Takes a lot to move Sabrina Lozada Cabbage, especially when she's got her feet planted on the perimeter, ready to set a screen. So that was a shot that she took there from Hargrove. Five shockers and double figures. And it kind of fitting because this game started with all five getting one basket among the shockers' first 10 points. Bassard with 15. Lozada Cabbage now with 12, Lockhart with 12, Thompson with 10, Ambrosio with 10, and Tompkins would be the next one to get to 10. She only needs two. She's got 547 to get it. And I wouldn't bet against it. Good help by Alicia Fay. Offensive rebound, though, by rushing. She misses two. Hawkinson ends up with a loose ball, and she gets plowed. She'll be shooting free throws. Would you look at that shooting percentage, Shane? Look it's at it, indeed. About the only intrigue left. 65.2 as we stand right now with 529 left. Just a few percentage points away from the all-time record for highest field goal percentage in a game. Hawkinson left it short. Chance for extended minutes here for Hawkinson as Wichita State tries to see what they have in the five foot eight freshman from Sweden. Can handle the ball a little bit, but also has some good physicality. Alcorn State has missed its last eight from the field. Their game percentage last night was 29.7. Tonight it's 26.9. So they have had a hard time putting the ball in the hoop. Only the second team foul for Wichita State, so it'll take a few more for the Lady Braves to shoot free throws. And Shane, I mentioned this a little bit earlier, but I wonder if it's a big reason why the offense has just never got clicking for Alcorn State. It's just that it's a team that has been kind of thrown together, assembled from a bunch of different pieces. They've got nine transfers among their 13 players on the roster, and it can often give you some of those growing pains earlier in the year. You just need a couple games to kind of learn how everyone plays. Chemistry issues, perhaps. Mm -hmm. 
75-41, all Shockers tonight at the Winter Classic. Only the second time ever Wichita State has played Alcorn State. That coming way, way back in 1991, a game the Shockers actually lost by 20. They are more than paying back the Braves, Lady Braves, that is 75-41. Wichita State has never trailed. They started off red hot from the floor. They've managed to hang on to the basketball, which is something that's been an issue, not only for them last night, but for Alcorn State opponents this year. The Lady Braves average 12 steals a game. They only have half that here tonight. And Wichita State's efficiency on offense has translated into a bunch of players scoring a bunch of points. Well-rounded, I think, is the best way to sum it up. Five players in double figures. Of course, Angie Tompkins just one bucket away from being the sixth. And it's hard to complain about much on the offensive side of things for the Shockers. Uh, Alcorn State has just had a hard time putting the ball in the basket either today or yesterday against Oral Roberts. And so they have their own issues to sort out. But if you're Wichita State, you can't be thinking about that. This is an opportunity for a third win in a row and continuing to grow as they move towards conference play. Two more points and the Shockers will have a season high. They scored 76 in a game earlier this year. So there's all kinds of high water marks statistically for you to look at over the last 454. But the most important thing will be Shockers going to five and eight, having won three in a row, just ahead of their last road trip in the non-conference before starting league play. They'll go to South Dakota State on the 20th. But it's been a pretty good time for the Shockers and their fans here tonight after surviving a scare last night against Chicago State. They have left no doubt from the opening tap here tonight. So it's Hawkinson, Jaleesa Chapel in there for the first time, coming back off of that knee injury from a year or so ago. Tompkins, Alicia Fay, and Andre Stovall. Step back, set shot three is no good. Tia Sanders continues to struggle. And Jada Hargrove couldn't save a loose ball heading out of bounds. Jaleesa Chapel will inbound for the Shockers, up 34. Safe to say, a night to forget for Tia Sanders. Two points on just one of five shooting. And not to be over dramatic, but I doubt she'll ever have another game like this again this year. There was nothing close to that on, on the season schedule for her so far this year, and so it was Definitely an aberration and not something that I expected. I don't think even Wichita State expected. Miracle rushing with her first point tonight. And we kind of joke that we haven't mentioned her name or seen her much tonight. She's a decent scorer for them. Nearly nine a game. She only had two last night and two tonight. One of just three seniors on this roster, but all three of them log pretty heavy minutes. Freeman, Sanders, and rushing. And they lean on them pretty heavily. Jaleesa Chapel playing in just her seventh game this year, red shirting a year ago due to that knee injury. You can see the brace on her knee. She had four minutes in the game against Chicago State last night. Boy, if the Shockers could hit their free throws tonight, they would really be piling up the points. As it is, they've tied a single game high this year with 76. And a miscommunication, Freeman fires it out of bounds. 
17th turnover for Alcorn State. And as I mentioned yesterday, that wasn't really their problem. They only had 11 against Oral Roberts, but it was just putting the ball in the basket that was the issue. And they haven't done that again so far this evening. Hawkinson all the way in, lays it in. Fanny Hawkinson with her first field goal. Good aggressive take from Hawkinson. She picked that up well beyond half court that there was no defenders within, within the next 15 or 20 feet in front of her and then just drove hard to the basket. Jada Hargrove line drives a three in straight away. That's her first basket of the game. That is a risky and I going to say an ill-advised pass and Alexis Freeman that's what she's known for. You said it a couple of minutes ago. It was a telegraph pass, and she's going to pick those off every time. Well, she's, she's hit her average now. She's got four steals, and I've been very impressed with her aggressiveness on the defensive side of the ball. If you are lackadaisical at any point, she will jump in a passing lane, or even if you're just kind of dribbling and not paying attention out near the timeline, she's liable to pick your pocket. Andre Stovall to the free throw line. That one's up and good. Stovall with five. She had five last night against Chicago State. Stovall knocks down a pair. Final three minutes. Well, this turned into, into a foul fest here in the fourth quarter. The outcome has never been in doubt. But we have had a parade to the free throw line, especially here in the final quarter. It was 62 to 39 at the end of three. But Lady Braves have continued to try to slow this one down. Alicia Fay has two points here tonight. Poor free throw shooting, about the only thing that you can really criticize for Wichita State offensively, and that's something that they had done very well. Yeah, they've unofficially missed 12. Otherwise, they'd be knocking on the door of 90. Could see a lot of this down the stretch with Alcorn State not relenting in that pressure. Well, you would think with a couple of more clean possessions for Wichita State, maybe that would stop and this one would end peacefully, but we shall see. Chapel to Hawkinson, back door, reverse, left it short. Tompkins is in double figures. Great hustle by Fanny Hawkinson to track down her own miss. I think she was frustrated with herself for not capitalizing on the reverse. Managed to save it, and then a very nice pass from Jaleesa Chapel too. A no-look find to Tompkins, who was slipping backside, finished through the contact, and back-to-back -back very good games for Angie Tompkins. Shockers are 1,000th of a point short of the single game I told you field this goal was going percentage to record. And you called it after I called it. You said it would land right where it is right now. We're two minutes and 26 seconds of free throws away from, <laughs> from it a keep startlingly it that accurate yep. prediction. The question is if the Lady Braves go the next 20 seconds without fouling. Where will the Shockers look for the field goal attempt? That was an easy shot. <laughs> and Jaleesa Chapel with a contested 16-footer. Nothing but the bottom of the net. She's got three. That is great to see from Jaleesa. Nice little smooth step back. Created some separation. Never even hesitated. Long three over everything. Chapel the rebound. Let's 
Stovall drops it off for Tompkins. To Chapel cutting in, and that may just do it. To Lisa Chapel, happy for her. She's got five tonight. Freeman for three, no good. Off of Chapel's forehead and out of bounds. Well, if Alcorn State chews up most of this possession and Wichita State gets it back, they won't have to shoot it again and they'll have the record. They're at 66.7 right now. Hawkinson into forecourt. There is five seconds difference between the shot and game clock. Nine to shoot. Stovall. Chapel from 19. Left it short. And that will do it. The Shockers are going to win this one by 41, 87 to 46. As they go 2-0 in the Shocker Winter Classic, they've now won 10 in a row in the Shocker Winter Classic. They get to 5-8 on the season. Denning and I will be back to wrap it up when we come back. About the only issue with this game here tonight, really from the get-go, was what would the final score be? Because Wichita State was really never threatened inning. And after seven of their first nine, you kind of kept your eye on the field goal percentage, and it basically was well over 60% the entire night. And lo and behold, they land right on the previous right high mark. On it. Right on it. 65.4% that ties the best uh, percentage from the floor of any Shocker team ever. And after last night, this has got to be a much welcome change for Keitha Adams and really got to make her feel proud. I mean, I can't say for certain, but I'd imagine that there were some rather harsh words in the locker room after last night. A, a game against an overmatched Chicago State opponent that was far closer than it needed to be. And this looked like a completely different Wichita State team. There were a lot of individual performances to highlight. Three players shot 100% from the floor. Lozada Cabbage, Ambrosio, and Thompson combined to miss zero shots out of 14. It was just a hyper-efficient evening. Six players in double figures. Everything just kind of ran smoother, and the Shockers just played with much more freedom. It was very, very exciting to watch, and it bodes well, I think, moving forward. And Alcorn State, statistically, not an easy team to play against. They steal it 12 times a game. They force nearly 23 turnovers a game. That's Shockers held up their end of the bargain in both of those categories. I think they stayed composed the whole time. Even when Alcorn State really tried to ramp up the pressure late in the second half, they were making it full court, pressing well beyond the half-court line. The Shockers stayed within themselves and took advantage of the opportunities when they presented themselves. Great offensive balance in addition to not missing many shots, period. They have six players in double figures and win 87 
246. They have won 10 in a row in the Shocker Winter Classic for Den and Gehrig, Shane Dennis saying thanks for watching. Enjoy the rest of your evening, everybody, and so long from Charles Coke Arena.